Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen Jezik, and if you follow me on Instagram, you know I just announced that I am pregnant, and I am almost 14 weeks pregnant. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I can do just quicker updates there and share a little bit more about my life. Uh, so head over and give me a follow at Kristen Jezik, but if not, and you're just tuning in to hear how I prepped for pregnancy and how we got pregnant on our first try, that's great too. Welcome. So I wanted to go over all the things that I did kind of over the last probably two years um, to just prepare for trying to have a baby. I did not do a lot of these things thinking that it was going to be for baby prep, but it ended up really helping me. It was mostly for overall health. So it can benefit you whether you're sure you want to try for kids or you're not sure you want to try for kids. These are things that definitely help me improve my health and my overall well-being. So they're useful at whatever stage you're at. But it's definitely something that I credit doing these things to helping me get pregnant so fast and just being in a good place to uh, be ready for a pregnancy. So the first thing I did was I started tracking my periods. Now I've been doing this for a couple years just to see that I'm regular and to get my hormones in balance, um, but it is a really helpful tool, especially if you are trying to get pregnant. Maybe you already know you're not on a regular cycle, or maybe you think you're on a regular cycle, but you're not sure, and they have just a million apps for this. I use the MyFlow app because it also tells you when you're ovulating, when your follicular phase is, when your menstrual phase is, all that stuff. Um, so it's really helpful because there are only a few days of the month that you can actually get pregnant. So if you're going to consciously try to get pregnant, it's really helpful to know what those days are. And it's a good awareness if you're not on a regular cycle, maybe to try making some lifestyle changes to see if that can get you onto a regular cycle. Now, a lot of things I talk in this video about really helped me get and stay on a regular cycle. There are a few times in my life that I was not on a regular cycle for months at a time. Um, so being on a regular cycle, having your hormones in balance is super helpful, something I really credit with getting pregnant so quickly. So first and foremost, if you realize you are or not pregnant, it is really good to start, or are or not on a regular cycle, obviously, if you're pregnant. I don't know, maybe you're enjoying this too. But uh, <laughs> first and foremost, is to work on, or what I did was work on my nutrition. So I started focusing on more nutrient dense foods and removing some of the alcohol, caffeine, and sugar that I was eating. Those things can really disrupt your hormones. So if you're noticing you're a little out of balance and maybe you're drinking four or five cups of coffee a day or drinking wine every night, especially with the quarantine, I know that people can just be drinking more because they're stuck in at home that can really throw you off and also make you crave more sugar the next day. Or even while you're drinking, it's different for everyone, but those things can really wreak havoc on your digestion and your hormones. And so just looking at how much you're consuming and obviously you probably won't be drinking as much caffeine or alcohol when you're pregnant. So it's good to start pairing those back and looking at how much you have in your life. The next thing I did was focus on getting better sleep. So. This can really help your hormones balance out. Definitely getting on a regular sleep schedule, putting your electronics away before bed, uh, creating a routine to just mentally get yourself prepared for it being bedtime. Uh, Self-massage, meditation, having no lights on in your bedroom, um, even a small amount of light. Like I put, I have a air conditioner box that has a little light on it. And I put a cover over that little light just to have no light enter the bedroom, make it as dark as possible. It helps me sleep better, can help you sleep better. You'd be surprised how just that light upsets our um, circadian rhythm for sleep. So just working on going to bed at a regular time, waking up at the same time, having a sort of system so that your body knows when it's rest time uh, can really help improve your hormones and get you in a better place mentally and physically. Cleaning up your personal care products is another really great step to not only balance your hormones, but prepare yourself for being pregnant. So for me, if you've seen this video, you know I talk about removing an eye cream that I loved. I used it as an all over face moisturizer, but it had a retinol in it and retinol's not good for pregnancy. So just doing your research on what chemicals are safe for pregnancy that might be in your skincare or your makeup or your cleaning products 
Um, a great resource is EWG's website. You can type in different ingredients that are in your detergent or soaps or perfumes or anything and they'll tell you why it's harmful or if it's good. That is a great thing to start cleaning up. And there are a lot of endocrine disruptors that can really mess with your hormones and cause your cycle to be irregular in these products. So you might notice that just by cleaning up your environment and cleaning up the products you're using, you might have less painful periods or a more regular cycle. It's really amazing how the chemicals that we're using and ingesting in our body or absorbing through our skin or even breathing in through our air can really affect us. So to start looking at that and look at it with your food too. Um, I don't eat a lot of animal products, but hormones added to dairy or antibiotics used in your meats or um, just chemicals even on your produce. Try to move to as much certified organic as you can or growing your own fruits and vegetables so you know what's on them. That's obviously the best if you live in a place where you can do that or you have the resources to do that. It is a really powerful way to reduce the toxins in your environment. Another thing I started to do, as you can see my books over here, I started to do research on what sort of supplements might be beneficial for pregnancy. And I know a lot of doctors will recommend you go on a prenatal for a couple months before you try getting pregnant. It's good to kind of build up your nutri nutrient stores. Um, so I definitely was taking a prenatal for many months before I wanted to try um, bonus. It really helps your hair and nails. <laughs> And um, they were actually, it was very helpful to try these out first because I did my research and chose a prenatal, but uh, then I switched prenatals a couple times. And because I had been on each prenatal for a couple months, I could kind of tell um, a difference in my hair or my nails, how fast they were growing. And then I switched to a prenatal that a lot of Instagrammers, a lot of bloggers, a lot of lifestyle content people we're talking about and I was like well let me give this brand a try and immediately my nails started cracking and chipping and it made me realize that not all prenatals are created equal and so doing your research and having a few months to try out you know what works best with your body um, some ingredients can cause inflammation in supplements so you want to do your research on where it's being made the quality standards they use and if it's enough nutrition for your baby and definitely for you, how you respond to it. So having time to prep before pregnancy is super helpful in figuring out what is gonna work best for you for supplements. Another supplement I started taking was probiotics. They are not all created equal, so be sure like with all supplements, do your research, talk to your doctor about safety. I'm not a doctor, this is just what works for me. Um, but I love the Kimberly Snyder Saluna probiotics. I take two every morning. They really seem to make a difference in my digestion. And it's kind of a bonus that when your digestion's working, your hormones are working better, you can sleep better, your skin might clear up. I mean, there's a lot of benefits of taking a good probiotic and just feeling the benefits to your digestion. Your gut has so much to do with your serotonin production and your mood. So that definitely helped me um, just reg stay regular and feel healthier as I went into trying for a baby. Throughout my research, I also took um, omega-3s, started taking omega-3s because that helps build the baby's brain. I had actually heard from a doctor that if you don't supplement with omega-3 or you're not getting it from your diet, uh, the baby can take it from your brain, which can cause um, postpartum depression. Now, I haven't done a ton of research into that. It was just what I heard a doctor tell me. Um, but it was enough with my research of omega-3s that I thought it would be beneficial to find one. I do take a plant-based one because there are lots of other things in fish due to over-farming or pesticides going runoff into the water or overfishing, things that I just don't also want to worry about in a supplement that come from fish. Um, so I do take an algae based one and it is important to do research with any supplements, but specifically with these, there's an ingredient that can cause inflammation for some people. So just finding one that works for you and having the time where you're not worried about already being pregnant and just taking the time before to prepare your body. It's super helpful for me and maybe that helps you feel more prepared and in control, which can really benefit your mental state. Speaking of mental health, I think it is really it was really helpful for me to clean up any thoughts or fears I had about having a baby or that life change or being a mom 
or being pregnant, definitely doing my research. I read a few books before and I might have even wanted to read more uh, because my first trimester I was so, so sick. I mean, I could barely get from the couch to a chair some days. So I couldn't look at a phone, I couldn't read, it would just make me even sicker. So feeling like I had more information um, instead of waiting until I was actually pregnant, that helped me feel better um, because definitely when I got pregnant, I was worried about you know trying to stay hydrated and get as many nutrients as I can and worry about other things that I already felt prepared for um, because I was, I had done some research beforehand. So doing research, feeling mentally prepared, working through any fears you have um, can definitely help reduce your stress and give you a little more feeling of participation and feel like you can do something in when you're actually pregnant. So that really helped me just feeling like I could take an active role in the pregnancy if it did happen. And also letting go of control that it had to happen. So that leads me to my last point is prayer. So I spent a lot of time in prayer, praying for our family, praying for the baby, praying for my health, praying for their health, and just really letting go of my need to have a baby and also being really open to whatever God's plan was for our lives, knowing that if we were supposed to have a baby, we would have one. And also recognizing that it, you know it's just as lovely to if I wasn't able to get pregnant or not able to have a kid, there's other options, there's other children who need love and just opening my heart to all the possibilities of being a mom and caring for myself and another person really helped me mentally prepare and be open because I know a lot of women from what I've seen experience a lot of pressure around getting pregnant and just knowing there are other options and that it's okay if you can't get pregnant or it's okay if you don't get pregnant and just taking an active role in your life and opening your mind to other possibilities. That mentally really helped me to not feel pressure around the whole situation. Um, definitely I'm in my 30s, which I didn't really think about, but for some people that definitely brings up some thoughts. Um, so yeah, I just think working through your mindset and working on your stress relief, that really helped me a lot because then we could enjoy the actual process of trying for a baby. Those were my tips on what I did before getting pregnant to have a really wonderful experience and actually end up getting pregnant on the first try. Um, let me know if any of these helped you, if you're trying any of these or if you wanna try any of these. And another great resource I wanted to mention is Alyssa Vitti has a book and a program called Flow Living and In the Flow, where she talks about balancing your hormones and she actually healed endometriosis naturally through her method. Uh, she's a wonderful resource source if you're looking to get more regular in your periods or understand the different phases of your body. I was fascinated to read some science about you know, what our bodies are able to do in the different parts of our cycle, um, which is just, it has really fascinating implications for our food, our rest, our work patterns, our social life. So it's really interesting and she's a really wonderful resource if you're looking to balance your periods or get in a more hormonal balance. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you made us the end of this video, drop a comment saying, um, what can I say so I know you watched to the end? Drop a comment saying, made it to the end so I know you watched and uh, please like, comment, subscribe. It all helps my channel and I will see you guys here for the next one.